right, folks, you're in for a treat today. We've figured out the secret sauce. We figured it out. These fish are in a weird transition period, and we're sniping them. Every fish, one by one. We just find a nice little pile here, but we just put in some dandies. One, one fish. So I'm going to show you this on live scope. Going to walk you through what I'm doing. Full of eggs. Thanks for joining me. Here we go. Bye. Thanks for watching 3 Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies. Another fish, single, single fish, 14 foot down this time. This guy was deeper than most. Look at that fish. Wow. Single fish. This guy was deeper for some reason, 14 foot. We got 48 degree water temperatures. Today's roughly 40 degrees. And it's just gonna be a great day. Let me show you what I'm fishing with. Just a hot pink, dirty milk, Jinko fishing, six pound line, high vis. Folks, I believe in high vis. A lot of people talk about, oh, I want clear line, I want clear line. Um, high vis, don't affect it. If these fish are feeding or they're willing to eat, high vis is just something I'm not gonna mess with. It's so much easier to see the line um, when you don't have it. I tend to get it tangled up in the trolling motor. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So I totally recommend high vis And uh, a 10 foot, this is a 10 foot right now. These fish aren't skittish, so I've got the 13 foot put to the side. 10 foot to me is, a I, I can pick it up really quick. Um, set the hook, so I'm a fan of the 10 footer even when I'm doing this, especially if the fish are not skittish. Otherwise, I would go to a 12 or a 13 footer. All right, folks, coming up here next, I'm actually gonna walk you through the whole process of sniping these fish, finding individual crappie on these uh, deep channels, basically, is where I found them. Um, this day didn't start off exactly like this, though. I can, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was actually looking for fi fish shallow. I happened to run into some 22-foot water, and eventually I saw little footballs floating around out there, basically, not floating, but swimming around. And uh, I, I decided I wanted to target a couple of them. I figured they were crappie, wanted to see how they were, would react, and bam, I caught the first one, I caught the second one, I caught the third one, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. So for the rest of the day, and actually for the last three or four days, I've done it straight, and it has been a blast. So when the bite gets tough, don't be scared to utilize this sniping uh, technique to find these fish. Here we go. All right, so at this point, I'm not touching my trolling motor as much as possible. And if I move it left or right, I'm moving it very slow. I adjust it, I bring it into 20 feet right there. Here he comes, he's coming right at us. Again, I'm not messing with my trolling motor. Gonna pitch to it. And there he is. <laughs> oh, he got off right there. But you saw the whole thing happen, and that's that's the whole process. That was a that was 11 inch fish. So let's see if we can find one more, but that's the whole process. You're just being as stealthy as you can. That's with a 10 footer, folks. I didn't have to go get a 12 or anything else. When these fish are not that spooky, you can get away with a 10 footer. Um, but, you know, some people feel more comfortable with the bigger poles and I'm gonna definitely be using the 12 and 13s as well, but there we go. All right, so here comes the fish again. Just about right there, I pitch it out. And there we go.
So that's a that's a that's a good eater, I guess. Um, but that's it, folks. You just saw how perfect it works. Searching 50, dial it down as the fish gets closer, and um, as it gets closer, uh, you cannot touch your trolling motor as much as you can't help it. Uh, that's a nice little eater, probably about a ten and a halfer. Um, but I'll tell you, a lot of fun, easy way to fill up the live well. So. There you go. All right, so let's briefly go over the equipment. One is I'm using a number seven split shot above a 132nd ounce jig head. That gives me a really slow fall. Once these fish hit the 12 foot mark, and again, I'm searching in roughly 30 to 50, but once they hit the 12 foot mark, that's ample time for me to pitch it out there and allow it to swing in from behind. This is probably my ideal method, the one I like the most. And I just try to, I keep that weight and that jig above the fish and you'll see it, it turns, it identifies it, and then it snaps on it. And that's how you're gonna catch your fish. Now, if you are a little quick or a little late to actually pitching your uh, jig and you come up in front of it like this one right here, slow it up, poke your pole out there as far as you possibly can and allow it to catch up. Now, this is where a 13 footer, 12 footer would definitely be an advantage because um, they can hold it out there farther. But it works just the same with a 10, just as you saw right there, I grabbed the fish. So this is a great technique to use around spawning areas. These fish are hanging out there waiting to go in and um, just a really exciting period or time to catch fish like this, without a doubt, when they're in this transition, when they're moving up and they're a little bit confused. It's notably a hard time to fish, but with this technique, you're gonna catch a lot of fish, folks. I just picked that guy off at three feet, three feet under the water. Look at that slab. Another thing about this type of fishing is that you're definitely going to adjust the way that you're fishing. You're not always gonna be out in front. You're gonna see that I'm sitting out here going to the side. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't wanna mess with the trolling motor. So I'm adjusting where my pole's at rather than me trying to adjust the whole boat running the trolling motor and it's very effective. So you'll see a lot of people doing some weird things with their poles. The only reason being is that you wanna stay off your trolling motor and be as stealthy as possible. I'm gonna give you tips throughout this entire video and another great tip is always put your nose into the wind and boat control. Folks, it is incredibly important to have good boat control and you can only do that if your nose is into the wind. If you think you're gonna go with the wind and fly across these fish, it just won't work that way. You have to put your nose into the wind. <laughs> That's a good fish right there. Yeah, baby, good times. Without a doubt, man, that is awesome. Small head, six pound line, high vis, playing it off the line scope. Saw these fish pass me and caught back up with one of them. Solid 12. Gosh dang, they really inhale that sucker. They really inhale that sucker. Solid 12 inch fish right there. Man, full of eggs. What a beautiful day. I'm gonna put that second live scope on the sweep up in front here. I think that's the best way to go right now. I actually think it's gonna work freaking awesome. I just talked to Mark from Cornfield Crappie Gear and that the, uh, the amps on the current one is five amps. Then the one that I'm about to get is gonna have 12, so it should move very quickly. It's got shallow very quickly. I don't tend to fish this cove very often, so it's gonna be interesting to see what I find. When I'm looking around for these fish, I'm just sweeping around left and right with live scope. Yeah. 
got them from underneath the <laughs> underneath the log. It looked a lot bigger on the live scope, but that's fun stuff. Remember, you want to be stealthy. We're pitching when we see this fish at around the 12, 10 foot mark. And then we're manipulating the bait with our pole. If it's falling too fast, if it's going to miss it, I'm slowing it up. I'm trying to adjust it to get it right to the fish. Oh, grab that sucker off the ground. That's a good fish. Yeah, baby. You got to love this. Individual single fish. Bam. Sitting on the bottom. Also, I like to use different size weights. Currently, I'm using a seven, so I have a slow descent, but I go all the way up to a quarter ounce based on the conditions and how the fish are acting, how fast I want to get it wow. down there. Another one swipe. Sniped! This is a lot of fun. Bam, good fish. I'm back to my 10 footer. Only because these fish don't seem to be spooking that much. And I just feel like I can set the hook that much faster. Don't forget the code three pound at ozarkrod.com. Use that, you get 10% off of anything you order from Ozark Rod. We've got uh, some awesome things coming. You wait and see here excited about Ozark Rods. I hope we get these tournaments back on the schedule. Uh, with everything that's going on in the world, it's it's uh, it's interesting. It, it, it definitely is a weird time for sure, but you know when you get to escape out here and get on the water, that, uh, that certainly helps. So get out on the water without a doubt. Another tip is definitely when you don't hit your mark, when you have a bad pitch, a bad toss, or whatever you want to call it, um, pull it up, do it again. Um, a lot of times you can spook fish. You, bad, only bad things happen basically when you have a bad pitch. This isn't like spider rigging where we want to keep the bait in the water as much as possible. We want a good, solid pitch. So if you don't hit your mark, pull it up, do it again, um, and you'll get more and more efficient at doing that and reacting to these fish as they come through. Great fish. Look at that, folks. Bam! And hailed it. Check that out. And hailed it. Good night. Now, different circumstances deserve a different, perhaps, action. On this particular case, I decided to pitch it further, and I actually start reeling it back and the reason why is these fish were a little bit shallow and there was actually a really good pile there and I didn't want to disturb them. This is the best fish I've seen today. The amount of fish that are there. Wow. Another great tip is you have to be patient, folks. Every fish is gonna take a little bit of time. It just, it, they aren't popping in the boat left and right. So take your time, go slow, methodically, make sure it's done correctly. And you have to be really, really patient, which I think a lot of people, that makes it really difficult. So here I am repositioning again for this particular fish. And you continue to do this for every fish that you're catching. You're adjusting. Um, sometimes you get it right, right off the bat, but a lot of times you're going to be adjusting to catch these fish, which takes complete patience without a doubt. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Please subscribe. Three pound fishing, baby. Let's get these tournaments back on. That's what I'm saying.